Hey guys, I'm Kevin Gillespie. I'm the chef and owner of Gun Show in Atlanta, Georgia, and today I'm going to show you my closed on Sunday chicken sandwich, a recipe I created for the book Fire in My Belly. So guys, the closed on Sunday chicken sandwich was my homage to the classic Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Inevitably, every Sunday morning you wake up and you think to yourself, I can't wait to have a Chick-fil-A. Oh wait, they're not open. So the guys on my staff helped to create this recipe and it became all of a sudden a favorite amongst the entire staff and then eventually amongst the people coming into my restaurant. So it starts out with the obvious chicken breast. We use a smaller chicken breast. We find that it cooks a little bit more evenly. If you find yourself in a position where the only chicken breasts in the store are the gargantuan ones, you can either trim them down or you can use this. It's a meat mallet. Basically, you just smack it until it gets nice and flat and even. That way they cook evenly. Now, the secret behind the Chick-fil-A is still a well-guarded secret. But we all know that it has a really classic flavor that's a little sweet, a little herbaceous, a little spicy. And so we tried to emulate that the best that we possibly could. And it starts out with this brine that we're going to make. Now, I read years ago that the secret recipe to Chick-fil-A involved pickle juice. And I don't know if that's true or not, but we decided to use that as a basis for it either way. So I have my favorite brand of dill pickle chips. The most sour pickle you can possibly get is gonna produce the best result. So we have pickle juice in here, and what we're gonna start with is one cup of pickle juice. So we'll pour it into our measuring cup, and we'll also take that then and pour it into our bowl where we're gonna mix our marinade. We're gonna add to it two cups of room temperature water straight from the tap. So two cups of water, one cup of pickle juice, and then the classic addition for a brine, any sort of brine, is gonna be salt. The salt is gonna do two things. One, obviously it's gonna season the chicken. It's gonna give us a more well-rounded flavor. But two, the salt actually draws the moisture out of the chicken breast at first, and then due to the chemistry of the osmotic reaction, as it's called, it draws all of that flavorful liquid back into the chicken, meaning that every single bite is gonna have the same burst of flavor. Then a little bit of sugar. The classic Chick-fil-A definitely has a distinctive sweetness to it. Now, it's more challenging than just a little bit of sugar in the brine, but this will be the first step. So we'll whisk up, and then this is when it gets really tricky. We spent weeks playing around with different flavors. Is it dried parsley? Is it dried chive? Is it onion? Is it garlic? Which one is it? Well, lo and behold, we found something that kind of had all of those flavors mixed into it, and it's the dried ranch salad dressing packets. Now, the thing that it also has is dried milk powder or sour cream powder, and that actually adds some sweetness to this recipe. So when it cooks up, it'll take on that classic deep golden brown color. So we'll take our dried salad dressing packet and we'll whisk it into our brine as well. It looks like it's gonna be a little lumpy at first, but inevitably it dissolves in just a couple of minutes. Now this brine that we're making or marinade, depending on how you see it, is one that has a couple of different things going on. It has the sweetness. It certainly has a saltiness to it. If you tasted it on its own, you would think to yourself, wow, this is way too salty. But imagine, the chicken really doesn't have any flavor to it, so we're having to sort of bring that into it. We're gonna add our chicken breast. We're gonna let them sit for at least an hour, but we can't let them sit for more than about three hours. If we go too far, if we sat this in the marinade and then we let it go until overnight, what would end up happening is that this chicken would first get really tough and then eventually it would start to turn to mush because the acid in it is a tenderizer and it actually breaks it down. So put this in a bowl and store it in your refrigerator and we'll come back and visit it in about three hours or so. So let's go ahead and mix up this breading uh, mixture that we're gonna use for the chicken. It starts with the obvious, which is all purpose wheat flour. So we'll pour that into our bowl first. Then we're gonna go with salt. Black pepper, obvious flavor to any Chick-fil-A sandwich. Now this is a little spin that I've added in. I like a little bit of heat to it. When I created this recipe, this was before the spicy chicken sandwich had hit the market, and I wanted that extra bit of punch to it, and so I'm adding espalette pepper. Espalette is a type of dried red chili pepper from southwestern France, and it's got a heat to it that reminds you of cayenne pepper, but it's not quite as spicy as cayenne. And then finally, this is where the connection comes between the brine and the breading, more of our dried ranch seasoning packets. Now the dried ranch seasoning obviously brings a lot of flavor to this, but it does one more thing. We mentioned before 
that it has dried sour cream milk powder in it. That milk powder is actually gonna help us achieve the deep golden brown color, that quintessential color that you expect of the fried chicken sandwich. That lactic milk that's in there, it actually has a little bit of sugar into it. And so that's what's gonna give us the golden brown that we want. So we'll pour it over into a pan here and we'll grab our chicken breasts out of the refrigerator. So we've let our chicken sit for about three hours in our brine. We have our breading made here. So the next step obviously is just to dredge these chicken breasts. So I like to take them out one at a time here just let the excess liquid drip off of this, but you don't need to dry it on the outside. In fact, that moisture is what's gonna help this breading cling to the outside of the chicken breast. So guys, after we let the chicken sit for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, it's gonna develop a really sticky exterior to it. So before it goes in the deep fryer, we wanna dredge it in our seasoned flour one last time. This is gonna make sure that we have an extra crispy exterior and lots of little fried crispy pieces. So shake that excess flour off and take it over and gently put it into your oil. Now I have my deep fryer set at 330 degrees and that's really specific. We find that the low temperature frying in this produces a much better product. If the heat was a little bit higher, maybe 350 or even 375, which is common in a lot of fried chicken applications, the outside of this would get burned and the interior would still be raw. We wanna keep this nice and golden brown and still really sweet when it's finished, which will take probably about eight minutes or so. All right guys, so we have all the pieces of the puzzle ready now. We have our fried chicken, it's cooled enough that we can finally eat it. We have our Hawaiian sweet rolls that have been toasted with some honey butter. We also have our hot sauce and pickle mayonnaise. So this is kind of our solution to the, the mayonnaise packet as well as the pickles that go on the Chick-fil-A sandwich. And I like a lot of it on here. So make sure that both sides of the bun, the bottom and the top, get a nice coating of this hot sauce pickle mayonnaise. Then it's as simple as adding a piece of our fried chicken to it and then sandwiching it up. Serve it with whatever your favorite side is. We're gonna do a little bit of coleslaw here, but more than anything, just remember to enjoy it. So at this point, you have all the tools you need to never be left on another Sunday without a perfect chicken sandwich. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs>